training student. Today we are going to talk about the new chapter, restoration. In this restoration chapter, we will see the basic process of the restoration. How the percentages of ATP is carried out. Okay, let us start the top restoration. The help of PPT. Okay. In this chapter, we will study about do the plant breathe, whether the breathing is carried out by the plants or not. Second one, the energy currency of the cell that is, we will study about the energy currency of the cell that is ATP, different types of aerobic respiration, aerobic air respiration and anaerobic respiration. In aerobic respiration, we will study about glycolysis, Krebs cycle, electron transport system. While studying anaerobic respiration, I will acquaint with fermentation process. The respiratory seed balance, and lastly, we will study about respiratory question one by one. First of all, we'll see about the introduction of the chapter. Every living organism requires the energy, and this energy it is conserved in the form of ATP. The ultimate source of energy for the earth is the sun. But what type of energy is used in all type of living organisms? In all living organisms, the energy is utilized in the form of ATP. And this ATP synthesis in animals, in case of heterotrophs, in case of autotroph as well, this ATP synthesis is carried out. Energy, it is the ability to do work, is called the energy. And from where does the living organism get energy? Living organism, they get their energy from food. Food contain different types of nutrients like carbohydrates, protein, lipids. These materials, nutrient, nutrient elements, nutrient materials, nutritive substances used by organism and after their breaking down they produce the energy and store it in the form of ATP. What is the basic process that provides energy to all types of ecosystems? Can you imagine the photosynthesis is the basic process. It is the important one and this the product of photosynthesis it provides the nutrition in all organisms. In this figure, you can see the this is the autotrophs that convert the light energy into the chemical energy that is ATP and use this ATP for the synthesis of carbohydrates. These carbohydrates are utilized by the heterotrophic animals. They perform their cellular respiration inside their cell and release the carbon dioxide. The release carbon dioxide again used by the plants for performing photosynthesis. It's carbon dioxide filtration and again produce the carbon dioxide. In this way, all the heterotrophs they get their carbohydrates or energy, energetic food, nutrition, nutritious food from photosynthesis. Here you can see 
the different trophic level all the heterotrophic heterotrophs they require they they get their energy from the autotrophic organism increasing food chain is always start from the green plants the green plants are the source of food in the food chain so all the biomass that present all this trophic level herbivores carnivores or carnivores the biomass is the thing but the food is getting transferred by a different different trophic level from autotroph therefore photosynthesis is the case but what is respiration respiration it is the breaking down of organic substances maybe the lipids maybe the sugar of different types of sugar maybe the food these organic substances their carbon carbon bonding is broken down and these bonding breaking down of bonding reduces the energy and this energy is conserved in the form of atp and this process is called respiration here you can see in the patient <coughs> this sugar is this sugar molecule glucose molecule it broken down it oxidizes completely into six molecules of carbon dioxide and during this process the energy released is conserved in the form of atp while the respiration of any type of organic substance the energy is released and this energy either get released in the form of heat or it may be get conserved in the form of energy uh, in the form of atp now this uh, respiratory substances like different types of carbohydrates proteins fat they can be utilized as the respiratory substance for performing respiration now this is the process of cellular respiration that we are going to study about in this chapter throughout this chapter we are going to the cellular respiration the cellular respiration the respiration that occur inside the cell that we are going to study about this now the next one point the first point of this chapter do the plant breathe absolutely the plant can breathe but they do not have any type of special type of any specialized respiratory organ Like we see in fishes, the lungs need to respire, but it does. And how does they produce energy? The primary source of energy for the plant is the sunlight. From the sunlight, they produce their energy in the form of ATP. Therefore, they does not need to invest or utilize their food material. for the synthesis of atp via respiration although the plant different part different parts of the plant they perform respiration do plant breathe yes they do then how do they breathe how do they produce energy the primary process of the the primary energy process is in plant is photosynthesis but the energy produced through the breathing is used for different purposes like the breathing germination aerobic respiration is carried out without this aerobic respiration seed can not be able to germinate then how do plant breathe although they do not have any type of specialized breathing organ plant they carry out their breathing exchange of gases to stomata nematophores and cells stomata presents on the leaf surface the nematophores they are a small small pore structure on their tap root lenticels are the small openings present on the stem to this small pore plants perform breathing and this breathing is required for different 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 function then why the plants can exchange gases without respiratory organ why there are three important reasons that can explain the answer to this question 
the first one is the each plant parts can take care of the stage of gases that's the means the stomata present in the itself if leaves they perform their own exchange of gases they take care of their own exchange of gases through the identity cells the same they take care of own they take care of exchange of gases through the identity cell the root itself take care of its own respiration means every part of the plant this is they are given a non specialized living organism they take care of the exchange of gases better this is the first reason the second reason is the demand for energy is lesser than animals animals they perform locomotion and therefore they have to invest more and more energy but plants they do not perform locomotion is the migration then such a type of locomotion is not present in plant therefore therefore it is not green means uh, they, they do not require the high demand of energy the third one is the distance that gases must decrease when in large in animals in case of animals vertebrates lungs be the main breathing organ then in the alveolar region the inhale oxygen it is transferred to the body via through the capillary network blood vessels that is the circulatory system inhaling gases is transferred to all parts of the body through the circulatory system at longer distances first type of longer distance exchange of gases transfer of gases is not required in plant therefore the plants they do not require any type of specialized breathing organ then now here we are going to study about in this chapter about the cellular respiration this is the equation that shows the aerobic respiration means the sugar glucose is oxidized into six molecules carbon dioxide and we get that energy This reaction is called the mitochondria. This respiration term was coined by the French. The seed germination, this phenomena was described by and studied by this Malthusi. During seed germination, high respiration activity is carried out in seeds for the growth and development of the embryo to the formation of the new plant cells. The rate of respiration is very much higher, as well as the heat also heat also reduced during the seed germination process. Louis Pasteur he studied about the anaerobic respiration phenomena. Then there are different types of we can we can divide the different types of respiration on the basis of different 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 levels. The first one is based on respiratory substance we can divide the respiration into two different types floating respiration and protoplasmic respiration the floating respiration is the respiration in which sugar and fats are used for the production of energy this is while the protoplasmic respiration it is a respiration in which the protein is broken down into amino acids and these amino acids these are used for the formation of ATP the floating respiration is quite common phenomena that occurs throughout the throughout the life all the times the cell they take care of the respiration they take care of the ATP synthesis by utilizing the sugar and the fats but protoplasmic respiration is some more the hardest one because the proteins are enhancing during this respiration proteins are building block that think or the building block in the sense the body of organ is a structural components different structural components of cell is formed by the protein if such a structural protein is getting utilized for respiration purpose the different functions of the cell get 
Therefore, for the, the prolonged, prolonged fasting, it makes the cell to utilize their protein. And whenever the protein gets utilized, it is very dangerous for the cell. Therefore, the long-term protoplasmic respiration causes degeneration of sorry, uh, deterioration of the protein from the body, and body becomes weaker and Here you can see the protoplasmic respiration. The intracellular proteins, different structural components of the protein, they are broken down into amino acids during protoplasmic respiration. We, we take the dietary proteins with the diet as a nutrition. Then they are also broken down during the digestion into the amino acids. These amino acids, they can be used for the formation of different, different substances. If the amino acid is broken down, then ammonia is given by deamination process. Then carbon skeleton of amino acid enter into the Krebs cycle. That means to be lighter about the citric acid cycle. It is called the Krebs cycle. Then ammonia, it is released outside the body in the form of urea as a excretory substance. Now this is all about the protoplasmic respiration that is take place in the cell. Then based on availability of oxygen, there are again two important types of respiration. If the oxygen is used for the oxidation of organic substance, it is called aerobic respiration. If oxygen is not used for the respiration, it is called anaerobic respiration. During aerobic respiration, the complete oxidation of food is carried out. What is meant by complete oxidation? Complete oxidation means the number of carbon present in single sugar molecule is totally converted into the six carbon dioxide. Means the number of carbon present is equal to the number of carbon released in the form of CO2. Then it is called complete oxidation. And this complete oxidation process, it is takes place, it requires the mitochondria. And therefore, due to this, this complete oxidation, it produces a tremendous energy in the form of ATP. And 38 ATPs or 36 to 38 ATPs are produced with the complete oxidation of glucose. What is the reason of writing 36 or 38? We will repent it, we will be familiar with this one. Or if you are not familiar with this one, then about this 38 or 36, how it is coming, okay? How this glycerol phosphate shredder, isn't it? Malate aspartate shredder is carried out. That is the reason that the 38 and 36 ATP is produced, okay? Here later on, we'll, you will be able to know why this 36 and 38 can be written here, okay? Then we are considering 38 ADPs. After complete oxidation of glucose, it produces 38 ADPs, and this 38 ADPs, it contains practic uh, practically, or if it is major, it is contains 684 kilocalories, but practically, uh, experimentally, it is 686 kilocalories. Therefore, it is written here. Then, incomplete oxidation of the food material is takes place during anaerobic respiration. What is meant by incomplete oxidation? Now, the total number of carbon present in glucose is not completely released in the form of carbon dioxide. Less carbon dioxide is released than the number of carbon dioxide present in the substrate. It is called anaerobic respiration. It is the incomplete oxidation of the substrate. And one more thing, during anaerobic respiration, the organic substance is produced. Means here the complete breaking of organic substrate is not carried out. Some part of substrate is converted into organic molecule. And therefore, during this incomplete oxidation, less energy is produced. Only two ATPs are produced. Then what are the examples of aerobic and anaerobic respiration? Here you can see the different plants and their parts as well as animals, which are crops. They perform aerobic respiration. 
Here are the different examples from those uh, figure. You can see in the Kenya solium, the parasite, the platform, ascaris, the they call it the round one, yeast, the fungus, RBC, then that presented vertebrates, and basal subtilis, the anaerobic bacteria, and muscles. These are the examples of anaerobic vegetation. And what about the energy availability? Here about during anaerobic respiration, when the sugar molecule is broken down, it produces great ATPs. During anaerobic respiration, the glucose is broken down, it produces great ATPs. If we compare these energetics, then 18 to 19 times more energy is produced in anaerobic respiration, we can say, than anaerobic respiration. And the ratio of their energy is 18 s to 1 or 19 s to 1. Then, during anaerobic respiration, the three important steps is carried out that we are going to study in this chapter. The first one is the glycolysis process. Second one is Krebs cycle. Third one is electron transport system. These are the linearly these, uh, cycles is taking place, but naturally it is not the case. Naturally, the, all the cycles taking place simultaneously as the availability of the substrate is there inside the cell. Then, this is the complete, uh, rest, complete breakdown of glucose in aerobic respiration, and it is carried out through the three different steps, glycolysis, rate cycle, and electron transport system. During anaerobic respiration, incomplete breaking down of glucose, can undergo two to three different processes. The first one is glycolysis. Then second process is the reduction that we're going to study. Okay. Then here, this is the fermentation process. Now glycolysis, fermentations are the steps that takes place during anaerobic respiration. Here from this uh, flow chart, you can see the differences between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Okay. Now, here it is all about the differences between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Now we are starting the chapter's important point that is aerobic respiration, the first important topic. During the Arabic respiration, the three important process, as I told you earlier, that is the glycolysis, Krebs cycle, and electron transport system, this process is carried out. Then Arabic respiration, during the glycolysis and link reaction, the NADH2 produce, it is, it undergo oxidation by electron transport system and produce the ATP. How it is taken place? That will Later. During Krebs cycle, the easily oxidizable substance NADH and FADH2 are produced. They get easily get oxidized by electron transport system and they produce energy. How does this energy is produced from NADH and FADH? Okay, in electron transport system is the question. Okay. We'll give the answer to this question later. Then, before going to start about the respiration, the basic unit of the energy in all living organisms is the ATP. Then how does this ATP convert the energy? Where does this ATP store its energy? ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. Adenosine triphosphate is the ribonucleoside triphosphate. Then it was discovered by Carl Luhmann and the energetic, metabolic energetic nature of ATP was discovered by Prince Lukman. The Indian scientist Subbarao also explained the metabolic energetic nature of the ATP as well. Then this ATP, as I told you earlier, is the ribonucleoside triphosphate. Ribonucleoside triphosphate. How it is produced? This ATP is consists of three important basic units. The ribose sugar, five carbon containing ribose sugar, then nucleus, uh, that is a nitrogen based adenine, and the three phosphate group. 
the sugar, ribose, sugar, the five carbon sugar, the furanose here, the furanose ribose sugar. The first carbon of furanose sugar, it binds with N9 of adenine by glycosidic bond. While the fifth carbon of ribose, it binds with phosphate by twister bond. Then we call it as adenosine monophosphate. Now you know about this one. The sugar and nitrogen base, when they bind with this glycosidic bond, we call it as we call it as nucleoside. We call it as nucleoside. Then this nucleoside, when binds with one phosphate by eastern bond, it is called nucleoside monophosphate, adenosine monophosphate. Then if second bond, second phosphate is added, it is called adenosine diphosphate. Then third phosphate, if it is added, it is called adenosine triphosphate. Now in this way, this adenosine triphosphate is produced. Now, these phosphate bonds, they store the energy. Here, you can see the screen. This is the squiggle. The squiggle indicates the phosphate, the high energy bonds. It is the phosphate bond. These phosphate bonds, they conserve the energy. Whenever this phosphate is broken down, the energy, the free energy is released. And these energy is used for different metabolic processes. In majority of metabolic process, this phosphate broken down, the phosphate of ATP is broken down and their free energy is getting utilized. Then three different phosphate bonds are produced, alpha, beta, and the gamma phosphate. The breaking of this terminal phosphate, gamma phosphate, it releases 7.3 kilocalorie energy. The second phosphate bond, beta phosphate, when it is broken down, it also produces the near about 7.3 kilocalories per energy. The alpha phosphate bond, after its breaking, it produces lesser energy, that is 3.4 kilocalorie energy. One ATP combined with it contains near about 80 kilocalorie energy. The complete three phosphate when breaking down, then it produces 18 kilocalorie energy. But in majority of metabolic processes, the terminal phosphate, that is gamma phosphate bond breaking energy, is utilized. Therefore, the usable energy, therefore, the usable energy from ADP in different metabolic processes is 7.3 kilocalorie of breaking of gamma phosphate bond. Whenever the usable energy is asking, then we have to use the 7.3 kilocalorie energy of breaking of alpha gamma phosphate bond. Now, how it is, we'll study. Now here it is the aerobic respiration, equation of aerobic respiration. The glucose molecule is completely broken down into the six carbon dioxide, and during this process, the 38 ATPs are produced here. Mathematically, it contains 684 kilocalories, but practically, it releases 686 kilocalorie energy after its measurement. Then, what is the gram equivalent weight of this substrate and product? 180 grams of sugar, when it is oxidized by 192 grams of Oxygen, they produce 264 grams carbon dioxide and 108 grams of water. This is the gram equivalent equation for the aerobic respiration. And as I told you earlier, one ATP contain 18 kilocalorie energy. Then how many energy present in 38 ATP? After multiplication, you get 684 kilocalorie energy. Practically 686 kilocalorie energy. It is called the total energy present in 38 ATP. That is by aerobic respiration from single glucose molecule. A single glucose molecule. But as I told you earlier, in majority of metabolic processes, the terminal phosphate, that is the gamma phosphate bond, is broken and their release free energy, 7.3 kilocalorie energy, is used for metabolic process. 
and this energy is called usable energy and it is 7.0 kelvin then what is the energy is present in single bond molecule after its complete oxidation we can find out by multiplying 38 with 7.3 7.3 is the usable energy of 180 then how much usable energy present in 38 atp is 277.4 kilo kelvin for one glucose molecule the usable energy is 277.4 kilo calorie energy then what is the energy efficiency of aerobic respiration we can find out the energy efficiency of aerobic respiration by the formula the usable energy of 30 atps divided by total energy of the atps in the and for aerobic respiration for single sugar it is 40 to 50 percent the energy efficiency of aerobic respiration is 40 to 50 percent why 2 percent for anaerobic respiration now in this way you can calculate the metabolic energy total energy of atp usable energy and energy efficiency of aerobic and anaerobic respiration now the next topic is how does atp synthesis occur what are the different processes that takes place in organism for the synthesis of atp now there are three important processes where the atp synthesis is carried out the first process is photophosphorylation second one is oxidative phosphorylation third one is substrate level phosphorylation phosphorylation means atp synthesis photophosphorylation we studied about this photophosphorylation in cyclic and non cyclic photophosphorylation in photosynthesis chapter as you know about this during photophosphorylation light here the photosystems they absorb the light get activate and perform the transfer of the electron and due to this the h plus ion concentration becomes higher in the way it activates the atp and atp synthesis atp synthesis enzyme the increase h plus ion concentration the increase potential gradient of h plus ion inside the liver it activates atp synthesis enzyme and in this way the atp synthesis is carried out now This is for photophosphorylation. We'll so we'll study in detail how does this is happening. Then second process is oxidative photo oxidative phosphorylation. It is it requires the special type of cell organelle that is mitochondria. The heterotrophs and different plants they perform oxidative phosphorylation as they have the mitochondria. along the inner mitochondrial lining different electron carriers as well as atp synthesis enzyme it situated and after this oxidation of easily oxidizable substance that is nadh or fadh the this oxidation of nadh and fadh it results in the synthesis of atp how it is happening that is also we are going to study in this next slide the third step is the substrate level phosphorylation from the substrate a phosphate containing substrate their phosphate is transferred to adp and energy is conserved in the form of atp it is a very suitable simple process that that the phosphate containing the phosphate containing substrate is utilized for the synthesis of atp very simple process that seen in glycolysis process this is again the another example phosphorylated paralytic acid their phosphate when transferred to atp it conserve or it is converted into atp now this is all about the deep atp and different structure now visit my channel and study about the kelly osmotic hypothesis how the atp synthesis is carried out 
giving oxidative phosphorylation as well as photophosphorylation. Here you can see the first demo of oxidative phosphorylation. The respiration is given in another my another view to occur to see these oxidative photophosphorylation oxidative phosphorylation and photophosphorylation these processes will be given in our next lecture okay thank you very much